Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about Google Earth applications for jury scientists uh, and I'm going to uh, give you a few tips if you are a geologist, geochemist uh, or geophysicist. And I promise that this presentation will provide you some uh, important notes, so stay tuned. The two main questions that I'm going to address in this presentation is, uh, in fact, what kind of information can be extracted from Google Earth that can be useful for your scientist? And the second question is that how do we usually use Google Earth in our scientific surveys? I mean, I mean how, uh, what kind of approaches we uh, apply uh, for, you know, when to benefit from Google Earth? And additionally, I will address two important questions in concluding remarks that will be amazing if you uh, possibly uh, have been working uh, and using Google Earth for your scientific surveys before. So, in terms of the information extraction from Google Earth, uh, we can extract geological information, we can extract lithology, uh, uh, you know, detection of the geological boundaries and the type of lithology sometimes. For example, we know that the igneous rocks uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, create uh, uh, rough surfaces and, uh, you know, or the lime units or the ones that are strong. Uh, physically strong uh, and resistant to erosion uh, represent uh, you know rough topo uh, topographic surfaces. Also, we can extract uh, some kind of information about the relative ages of geological units. We can understand which one is younger or older, but how, in fact, how by you know uh, understanding the layering of the geological units, you know we can understand the approximate azimuth and dip. Of the geological structures. Also, we can determine, uh, determine faults, sometimes even their mechanisms, uh, the presence of falls, the you know impact craters, volcanoes, or any kind of geological structures, uh, especially in the regional scale, can be easily determined by looking at the Google Earth because it provides us satellite image plus digital elevation model that are uh, really effective, and also we have the capability to. Uh, have a three-dimensional view which makes uh, our mind very uh, you know, accurate in understanding the geological and structural phenomena on the Earth. Also, we can uh, actually uh, characterize the alteration halos, the, their extension uh, or the mineralization zones uh, from cases to cases uh, and um, importantly, in the mineral exploration, we can understand the previous mining or the historical mining activities in a region, the excavations, the tunnels, the dumps or slacks that are present in an area that can guide us to the location of the concealed mineralizations. Importantly, we can uh, understand the local or regional information that is required for our geoscientific survey, for example, uh, in the case of geochemistry and geochemical data analysis, we can understand the possible sources of pollution, which will be very important uh, when um, uh, you know revealing the reasons of anomalous values in our data sets. Also, we can understand the possible sources of noise or undesirable signals in geophysical surveys. Uh, and there are a lot of other uh, examples that can be uh, mentioned from you know hydrogeological investigations and any kind of thing that we can uh, you know uh, everything that we deal with in your scientific surveys. Now the second question is that how we uh, implement the extracted data from Google Earth or basically how we use Google Earth in our scientific surveys. Mainly we use two approaches. The, uh, the, in the first method, we extract the information from Google Earth um, and uh, create some kind of a digital files, uh, saving them in KML or KML formats, and then converting the uh, uh, KML or KMZ files uh, to other spatial data formats like shapefiles in, that can be used in ArcGIS, for example. 
Alternatively, the most common, uh, in fact, methodology and approach is, in fact, uh, that uh, the geoscientists uh, make some models, uh, create some maps, or uh, you know, they import some of their data uh, into the uh, into the Google Earth. In fact, uh, in fact, they plot, for example, plotting a magnetic map in uh, Oasis Montage or GeoSoft or creating uh, uh, an interpolated surface in ArcGIS and then they uh, save them in KMZ formats or GeoTIFF format or any kind of a spatial data format that can be visualized in Google Earth. Most of the time the second approach is being used by geoscientists but I usually prefer to the first methodology because uh, we do not convert all of our uh, data layers, uh, for example, all of our shape files into KMZ to uh, load them in our, uh, the Google Earth, which will not be very effective. But the opposite direction, in the, in the, like the first methodology, is much more powerful, and to my, in my opinion, it would be much uh, useful. And in the end, uh, there are always two great questions. Uh, regarding the application of Google Earth and geoscientific applications. Uh, and the first one is that we mainly uh, focus on the application of uh, Google Earth and this kind of analysis for uh, small scale surveys. Or So what about large scale surveys? Can we also apply them to uh, detailed investigations uh, in the geoscientific domain? Uh, or you know, can Google Earth be still beneficial for us in these kind of scales? Uh, the answer is uh, yes, it can help be helpful, but it really depends on our case study and the situation that we are dealing with in our study area. Uh, but sometimes this is really helpful, so it is always recommended to check uh, what kind of extra information, uh, useful information that can be, you know, understood from. Uh, you know, satellite imagery and the Google Earth uh, environment. Uh, the other question uh, is that many satellite images can provide similar information. You know, we can download satellite imagery uh, and, for example, Landsat images and do the same. What is, in fact, what is special about Google Earth? In fact, the Google Earth is the first option is that it is free to use, it is easy to use, and we can have quick access to satellite imagery. Uh, especially this option uh, will be very sensible if we want to uh, have the historical images of an area. So, you know, in Google Earth, you just open it. You just click on the historical imagery option and you will switch between dates and it will be easily visible for you. And the amazing thing about Google Earth is that it provides you some kind of upgraded imagery and more importantly is that you have three visualization. You have the satellite images draped into the digital elevation models, which is very amazing and something that is not, you know, possible to do in remote sensing softwares. Now I would like to go to Google Earth to provide you some examples uh, about the second, the two approaches, the method number one and method number two that I have discussed, and I will also share, you know, uh, how this kind of uh, information that I have just discussed can be extracted from Google Earth. Let's open Google Earth environment and. First, I would like to go through the second methodology, you know, just doing some kind of analysis and importing our results into Google Earth platform. So in this case, you will see the results of a magnetic data that is interpolated by GeoSoft and is being imported. I have the t total magnetic intensity map and also the uh, reduced to magnetic pole uh, images so I can easily check uh, what kind of the geological or uh, artificial man-made structures can be representative for the various anom anomalies that I have in this area. In this area there is nothing, there is just you know the recent sediments so it's not very 
clear to see those details but you know uh, uh, this red line in fact is the border of my study area and uh, I just converted a shape file and displayed it into Google Earth and these are the yellow dots are the location of the data points the measurement data points of the magnetic uh, survey so in this regard you will see that uh, you know I, we can easily import different type of data formats into Google Earth and look for uh, the reasons behind data variations now I would like to go to the method number one you know, extracting the various kind of informations and in this case I have provided you uh, an example from you know how we can understand the uh, geological structures you know these the yellow lines that I have just drawn shows the location of regional faults controlling the uh, tectonic setting of the area and uh, they in this case if we zoom a little bit I draw the geological boundaries the approximate geological boundaries with yellow so uh, you can easily you know the changes in color can be easily uh, recognized with the naked eye you know looking at the satellite images we can easily uh, draw some preliminary geological uh, interpretations so it, it depends on your scale and in the investigations but sometimes this simple analysis can be helpful uh, and in this case if you look at this uh, in fact uh, area you will see that we have uh, sedimentary or rockland sedimentary rocks in the area and they are all uh, you know have they all have the similar uh, azimuth of n 75 degrees you know 75 degrees from the north and their dip is uh, 30 to 60 in uh, when it comes to the analysis and you will see that if we just use this 3d visualization we will be able to recognize that the layers are dipping this way and their uh, azimuth is some um, in fact in this direction so uh, just a uh, quick look in the google earth can tell us a lot about the geology and a lot of the structures that are present in an area so these are just some simple examples you know uh, that I wanted to mention more importantly I wanted to say that you know we have uh, discussed about the way that we you know save the data files uh, for example uh, I wanted to you know just tell you that it is not necessary to export this uh, each line uh, you know individually we, and we can do all of them at the same time in one file and for example these are the you know uh, various faults that I have just uh, created you know they are each one uh, pass way so in order to have all of them in one file I just have to click right on this uh, uh, in here the method number one all of the files are uh, you know being the in the sub directory of method number one and I just should click on add folder then I will for example I will say faults and I will click on OK and I just drag all of these values and to the fault so all of these are just being visualized and controlled under the fault so just click right on fault and save places as faults KMZ and the thing that happens is that all of these uh, single uh, individual pass lines which are in fact the faults in the area are uh, saved in one uh, KMZ format so I'm going to load that fault here that you will see this this KMZ file shows the in fact the, all of the files at the same time and you do not necessarily need to extract uh, the uh, in fact 
lines one by one so it will be taking a lot of time also we can for example look about the activities in the region for example if we see some kind of an alteration zone in here for example uh, a kind of an old working or you know uh, old work extraction for example in here we can just throw a polyline and you know just extract them and uh, you know visualize them in other platforms